Hello, and welcome back to Summer Wisconsin. Hope you all are doing well. Duck season is almost here. I basically finished up this lighting project in the boat. I did this video a little bit differently. I took a little bit of B-roll or cut-in uh, footage to talk about kind of what I've done and what I've been working on on the boat. First video you guys can go ahead and check out right up here. That video was all about uh, just kind of demoing the boat, what my plans were for it. Second video was all about the floors. I redid the floors in the boat. You guys can check that one out at the end. I'll put a link over on the side at the end. And then last but not least, this video is all about the lights, the electrical in the boat. I had to add all of the electrical and the lights on the boat, including nav lights, trolling motor power, battery, somewhere to put a battery, all that sort of stuff. So that's kind of what I've been working on on this boat here the last week or so. It's taken a little bit longer to get the electric in than I had expected. Here is kind of what I did. So obviously our battery is going to be at the back of the boat right over there, kind of in the corner. Um, let's go ahead and go back here and look at it. The first thing that we did was bolt in the uh, battery box um, and our battery, and obviously to be legal, it needs to be bolted into the boat, it needs to have a lid so that battery can't fall out. Um, so that's what I did first. And then the second thing that I did was we needed a switch or some switches in this boat. So I added the switch panel right down here and this switch panel was probably the most time consuming thing to put in because to put in the switch panel I had to cut a hole in the boat down here and then I had to also put in this uh, little box here and you can see in the box I have all of the uh, electrical that comes into the box there well, I used that saw that I that you saw me with the floors. I used that to cut the holes. The hardest part was getting all this styrofoam out of the hole here. So you can see there's styrofoam in there. So I had to cut out that styrofoam. Now I didn't cut out all the foam. I just cut out what I needed and I cut a little hole to the back there which is where I ran the wires through. I used some little rubber grommets in the back here so I wouldn't damage those wires when they came out. So that is uh, kind of what I put in. I'll put a link to this box in the description right down below. I mean, it's fairly inexpensive. It's waterproof. Uh, I put some, some caulking around it as well. It should be a watertight box. Keep my electrical stuff, um, water, water out of all my electrical stuff. The switch I put in is also supposed to be waterproof. It has a little rubber gasket. Um, if we have issues with water getting into there, I'll probably add uh, some caulking around that as well. What I did was I ran my main source into the, my switches here and then um, I ran them all back out of the box. Uh, what I put in was right down here, you can see and I'll cut to it, I put in these quarter inch uh, tubing, it's just PVC tubing, comes in a roll actually. Um, so I bought some tubing, I ran one of these pieces of tubing all the way to the front of the boat and that's what powers my lights up here in the front. I'll put a link to this down below as well but up in the front um, I put, I built this little box right here to mount my LED light bar to. I put my nav light up in front of that. So the problem I had was I needed to get this light up higher because the deck sits three or four inches below where I needed it for the light to be even. So I just built a little wooden box. It's kind of temporary. I can take it out pretty easily. I mounted it with a little L bracket here, the same L brackets that I used on the floor. And then... I put one screw in the front, then I have an L bracket up in front here, that one I painted, and that has six screws in it, three screws in it, and then three screws into the wood. It's pretty secure, and I don't have to really worry about um, it coming out while I'm driving and things like that. So the, uh, the light bar that I put in actually has uh, floods on each side, and then it has uh, the beam in the middle. If it doesn't work, I think I paid like 30 or 40 bucks or something for it on Amazon, so I can always replace it. You can see that I ran this electrical here all the way up to the front, and then I ran it under the deck right here, and I came up in the corner right here. 
and then ran it up in front of the wood to both of my lights. Now, I also installed, underneath the seats here, I installed some LED lights. And those LEDs took a little bit of time to put in. Again, I'll put a link right down below to the LED lights that I used in this boat. They're waterproof. There's little connectors you can buy that didn't come with it. I thought they would come with it, but you have to buy these little extra connectors. They're like seven bucks or something. And those connectors let you um, run wire in between where you don't need lights. So what I did with the, with, the, uh, with the lights is I actually ran them back here by the motor so we could see in the morning uh, when we're loading our stuff in the boat and when we are getting ready to go. So they're actually blue LEDs. It lights up the whole back here where the gas tank is, the electrical is, the motor. Um, so there's, uh, and they're underneath the lip of the seat. So it works out pretty well because they're under the lip. Um, I have another row right here under driver's spot. I have another row uh, under this seat and that bench right there. Because I couldn't hide them in the front of the boat, way up there, um, I didn't put a row across the front. Our main purpose for those LEDs is the few times a year that we might have to hunt out of the boat um, just to provide light in the boat and uh, somewhere where uh, we, we don't have to wear our headlamps the whole time. We can just flip on the lights and run those LEDs. Um, but to run those LEDs, I ran them out the back first. I have a switch right down here um, that's separate. All my switches are separate. I have six switches, um, but I only am actually using four of them right now. Considering putting lights on the back of the boat as well eventually, I didn't yet, so I have a switch for that. And then I have one open or extra switch. Don't even know what I would use it for. Maybe you guys can comment right down below. Let me know what I can use it for. I don't know what else I would use it for. We're not gonna put our trolling motor on a switch. We're just gonna connect that directly to the battery. So the LED lights. So I ran those out the back and then I ran the first strip behind me on the seat. And then I uh, cut them right there. And I ran a wire through the seat down here. And then I ran my second strip um, under my legs here. Comes over here and you can see that it comes out right down here in the corner. That runs into the red quarter inch PVC piping. And then I ran it, you can see I didn't uh, tighten, tidy this one up yet here. But you can see that I run it into here. Um, and then this LED strip runs here, all the way over to here. And then I run, you can see it running in there. This one's tidied up, comes out over here. And then again, right back to there. So that's kind of how I ran my LEDs right there. Pretty simple, turned out really good. I love the way it looks and uh, it should be, should be a good quality duck boat for us now. We have a little bit of a dry storage in it. We won't really use this to store things. Maybe we throw our wallet in here or something. Um, boat registration could go in there. That's about it. The hardest thing in the electrical project was probably this quarter inch PVC tubing. I had a heck of a time running my wires because I actually tried to run th two wires Actually, it would be four, but I ran two insulated positive and negatives to the front of the boat and then back, obviously. So the hardest thing was getting that wire through that quarter inch PVC pipe. I'd get about three quarters of the way in and it would just get stuck. I could not get that to continue through the pipe. It would just get stuck in there. A little quick tip if you are running it through this quarter inch PVC, um, put a little dab of dish soap on the front or on the tip, and as you push it through the PVC, it kind of lubricates the PVC and lets that cord slide through, those wires slide through really easily. I mean, I literally tried for an hour. I tried with uh, coat, coat hangers or clothes hangers. I tried with uh, string to get that wire through there. I could not get it. So after an hour and some brainstorming, I put a little soap on that and it went through in like two minutes and I was, uh, Thankful that it went through, but also frustrated that I wasted an hour on it. So if I would have known that going in, I would have saved so much time. Last thing I wired in here, um, I wired in my nav lights to the back. And this nav light right here is on the same switch that my front nav light is on. And then I also have, um, I also have my uh, bilge pump wired in and bolted down here. For this, I actually just made a little L bracket to mount this on. I screwed the 
bilge pump onto the L bracket and then screwed the L bracket into the support system in the back of the boat. And that worked out pretty well. That way I could get that bilge low enough to the bottom of the boat, but not so low that um, I had to like screw into the boat or anything. Yeah, guys, that's it. We're gonna do one more video. Basically when we are all done with this boat completely, we'll just do a quick little walk through the boat. This boat is now going to my dad. You guys know my dad. He's in these videos all the time. He's mostly in the duck hunting videos and stuff like that. But uh, my dad's now going to get the boat. And what he's going to do is he's going to paint up the trailer. He's going to add some camo to the outside of the boat. Just a little bit. I don't think he's going to put much on here. And when he adds that camo and that's all done, depending on water levels, I'm going to put a blind on this boat at some point. I'm only going to put it on if I need it. We really do not hunt out of the blind that often in a boat or hunt from the boat that often. We usually will ditch our boat, hike in a little bit, and hunt a spot or park our boat, hunt a spot on the shore on the, on the edge of a pond or a river or something, and then we'll, we'll run our boat down a little ways. That's kind of the plan. My dad's going to camo up the boat. We'll give you a walkthrough after that before our duck season, or maybe it will be on our duck opener. We'll just do a little walk through the boat at that point in time. It turned out really good. Uh, I'm really happy the way it turned out. If you guys have any suggestions, let us know right down below on what else we should add to our duck boat. Maybe a second bilge pump. That might, that might be what I use my last switch for actually is just to have a second bilge pump. Especially if we're going to be out on the Mississippi a little more in not always the best conditions. It's always better to have a second bilge pump. That's that guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Chase. We're always somewhere in Wisconsin. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see our duck hunting videos that are coming up this fall. Or if you want to see our duck builds, go ahead and click right over here on the side. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Duck season is right around the corner.